Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to discuss with you how to create a simple business plan for the Grade 12 Accountancy Business and Management strand in the Philippines. Supposedly, Grade 12 students should be deployed to different industries and companies where they will be able to apply whatever they have learned in school in actual work scenarios. At the same time, the companies or the industries would help these following students to understand the concepts of whatever things discussed in school so that everything will make sense in real world. However, with a rapid increase of confirmed positive COVID-19 cases, it would be too impossible to deploy the students to industries and companies. So, as an alternative, the Department of Education have come up with another activity wherein they will still be able to apply their knowledge gained while they were studying. And this is to create a business plan and to implement a micro business operation. So, let's begin. So let's discuss the table of contents or the contents of a business plan. First, you'll have the introduction. Second, you'll have the business proponents. Third, the target customers and the main value proposition to the customer. Fourth, the product and service offerings. Fifth, the financial forecasts and expected returns, risks, and contingencies. And lastly, the environmental and regulatory compliance. Now, before we continue, before you can create a business plan, the very first thing that you need to do is to evaluate your community or your society. You have to identify what the people need most. For example, you live in a community that's always flooded. Come to think of a business idea or come to think of a product that would be helpful when it comes to a community that's always flooded. Possibly, you can create boots. However, boots already existed in the market. So try to innovate that idea. So maybe you can create boots that can be converted into shoes if it's just a normal day. Something like that. Or evaluate your community. What is the basic problem that your community is facing? Let us say, in your community, there are a lot of plastic wastes. So try to come up with a business idea that you can take advantage of plastic wastes. So let us say, maybe you can create home deckers. So maybe you can create bags out from plastic. So it depends on you. So you must use your creativity. So right after you have so right after you have come up with a business idea, this is where everything in this table of contents would come in. So let's start with the introduction. The introduction is composed of the business concept and the business goals, vision, mission, objectives, and performance target. Now for the business concept, this is somehow like a summary of what your business is all about. So I have here an, an example that you can benchmark your idea of your business concept from. Actually, in this example, the business is about a flower company. A flower company that makes or manufactures flower out from papaya peelings. So let's begin. It is no secret that the Philippines is home to many beauties, from its natural resources, people, and amazing sceneries. This tropical country is indeed home of many resources that the world needs and use in a daily basis. In fact, this country is one of the leading exporters of bananas, pineapples, and along with other fruits globally. These tropical fruits aren't just exported raw. Most of them are processed and turned into something that the world mesmerize and patronize. Few of the many truly Pinoy made products are dried mango and papaya, banana chips, carrot soap, and papaya soap, and many more. 
Yet, the abundance of the raw materials and convenient access to it makes people blind and unable to think outside the box. Papaya peels in particular are wasted and thrown away after its fruits are taken to process it as soaps, whitening cream, and dried fruit. Moreover, the Philippine flour industry being very dependent with other countries for their raw materials, wheat, in the production of wheat flour in the Philippines is facing a threat in terms of the cost and sustenance of its essential commodity in the Philippine market. Studies conducted to solve this problem concluded that, to aid this problem, flour ingredient that is available within the Philippines has to be created. Papaya peel, which contains similar contents with wheat, can be innovated to make a papaya peeling flour. This initiative to know the marketability of this product is especially inspired to provide healthy alternative to the general public and economic benefit to all stakeholders. If this undertaking would be proven feasible, this does not only benefit consumers but the entire population in terms of the alternatives and materials within our one shores. All right, so now let's go to the second part in the introduction, which is the business goals, vision, mission, objectives, and performance targets. So let's discuss one by one. For the vision, so I have here a sample vision taken from the entrepreneurship book by Dr. Eduardo A. Morato Jr. So by the way, um, when you see vision, it's like what you wanted to achieve in the future. It's like three or five years from now, what you wanted your business to become. So in this sample, to establish a commanding presence and market leadership as a food chain servicing major bus terminals in central Luzon within the next five years. Now for the mission, what is the mission? It's like, what are the things that you will do in order for you to achieve your vision? So a sample mission in relation to the vision, to provide quality food and passenger convenience services that would generate sufficient profits for the stockholders and improve the lives of its employees. So basically, going back to the mission, to establish a commanding presence and market leadership. So in your mission, it's like, how can you establish a commanding presence and market leadership? So as a company, you will provide quality food and passenger convenience services. So your vision should be related to your mission. Now for the sample objectives, actually, vision and mission are just general statements. Now for the objective, these are detailed statements. Like for example, in order for you to achieve these two, you have to first establish a strong market presence in Luzon to earn good financial returns for its owners, to delight customers with quality food and services, to make ABC, so let us say the name of the company is ABC, to make ABC company a happy and rewarding place to work in. Because going back, let us say, Number three, to delight customers with high quality food and services. So you have here to provide quality food and passenger convenience services. And another one, to make ABC Company a happy and rewarding place to work in. You also have it here to improve the lives of its employees. In addition to creating your own business, you should not only think about profitability. Of course, you must take note of the welfare of your employees. So it is important to consider your employees too. Now, once you have already constructed your objectives, you will create your key result areas. So objectives are just statements, but once you create, or once you have your KRAs or key result areas, it's like you quantify your objectives. So for example, so to establish a strong market presence in central Luzon. So how will you be able to establish a strong market? So for example, number of food outlets and major bus terminals in central Luzon, sales volume attained, market share in central Luzon. So actually I know that this is quite confusing still, but don't worry, in the next slide, everything will make sense. So for the second, to earn good financial returns for its owners. 
So amount of net profits realized for the next five years, return on equity, re return on assets, or return on investments, return on sales. To delight customers with high quality food and services, growth in sales per outlet, percentage of repeat customers, number of customer recommendations or complaints, awards and recognition given by the community or the government for excellent service, customer survey rating to a certain customer's degree of delight. The fourth one, to make double happiness, so this is actually the name of the company, to make double happiness a happy and rewarding place to work in. So compensation and benefits to managers or work and workers are above industry rates, management and employee turnover, number of job applicants compared to other similar establishments. So actually you can create your own KRAs based from your objectives. You just have to make sure that your KRA or KRAs are related to your objectives now so once you have drafted or once you have created your kras you will have performance indicators so for example in the first one let's go back to establish a strong market process in central luzon so you have an idea um how how will it be done so you have to project Let's say, for example, um, into let's say right now it's 2014, and then one year later, 2015, and then five years later, 2020. So imagine that this year is still 2014. So number of food outlets and major bus terminals in Central Luzon. So as of now, until December 31 of this year, you're planning to have three outlets. So basically, you'll have to start with one outlet and then you'll expand to two outlets maybe after six months and then another outlet in December. Now next year, you plan to have maybe additional five outlets and then in 2020, you'll have additional 20 outlets or maybe it's your goal. Right now, you'll have three outlets in 2015, you'll have a total of five outlets already. And then in 2020, you'll have 20 outlets already. So it's like you quantify everything. Now for the second sales volume attained. So for now, you're projecting that you'll have a total sales of 7 million paces. And then in 2015, you'll have a total of 13 million paces. And then for 2020, you aim to have a sales of 16 million paces. And then for the market share in Central Luzon, um, 2%. For the market share in 2015, 3%. And 12% in 2020. And I think you can uh, basically just read the, the other examples below for your guidance. Now, let's go to the business proponents, organizers with their capabilities and contributions. So this is the second part of the business plan so for the business proponents of course you must have a resource mobilizers and financial backers like who will provide the money you also have technology providers and applicators like who will provide the necessary technology for the business governance and top management like who will like who will monitor the progress of the business like who will be the main commander and lastly, the operating and support team. Now we have here an example of a business proponent. So the box at the top, actually, um, you must have a two by two photo. And then below, you provide at least a brief introduction or a brief information about that business proponent. Like for example, in the picture, it's Nadine. So Nadine Reed is 17 year old and a student of Shield Next School Incorporated. She is living with her family in Patogo, Consolation, Cebu. She was assigned to be the president of the business. So basically, that's just a brief information in your first paragraph. For the second paragraph, maybe you can have um, additional information like what will be the task, what will be her task as the president, assuming that you have opened the business already. So as the president, she is expected to perform a number of tasks. 
She must enforce law and make policies to be followed by every employees and departments. She was also assigned to establish short and long-term goals. She also needs to manage the budget and ensure that all departments meet their goals. Lastly, to be successful president, she must have an excellent leadership and decision-making skills. So this is just one example. So um, which part is it? So going back, this is actually in the governance and top management. So you also have to create for the resource mobilizers and financial backers and the rest of the, and the rest of the components. Now once you're done with the business proponents, here comes the third part, which is the target market and main value proposition. So of course, when you create a business, you must have a target market. Like for example, Colgate. You remember Colgate? They have a particular product that's best or suitable for children. And that kind of toothpaste tastes um, sweet. So it's really suitable for children. So their target market are children. So you, in the future, once you have already proposed a product or once you have already come up with an idea of your business, then you must think of your target market. Who will be your target market? So I have here a sample um, proposition or target market and the value, main value proposition statements. The very first thing that companies should consider is its consumers. It is very important for the business owners to know the primary users of their products in order to identify their needs. Target market is a group of consumers that companies had chosen to direct its marketing scheme. The target market to this proposed project is City of Naga and Minglanilia Bake Shop owners or the bakers. So this um, target market value proposition is related to the business concept that I have discussed in the beginning of this video. Because um, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the video, it was about flour. Therefore, the target market of the company where I have derived these information from is or are bake shop owners or yeah, are bake shop owners or bakers. And let me continue. The researchers obtain data by dispensing survey questionnaires to bakers and owners. They are the main reasons that researchers had selected to answer the survey because they are knowledgeable as the usage of the flour and they have the deciding power or greater influence to choose what raw material to use. Now, once you have created your target market and main value proposition, you're now on the fourth part, which is the product or service offering. Now, in your product or service offering, you must include the packaging. Of course, have you ever buy, uh, have you ever bought something that doesn't have any packaging? Maybe in the side sidewalks you have. But if you wanted to create a business as much as possible, create a packaging. You can create your own packaging. So this packaging is also still related to the target market and the business concept idea which is about the flower so this is how the packaging would look like so in the future if you will be creating your own business plan create your own packaging for your product you must be innovative enough that's where your marketing strategy will come in how you will how you will derive your packaging so that it will be enticing for the consumers or customers once you're done with the packaging, you'll have a product description. So this is still in the flower um, business. Papaya peels. Flour is a fine powder made by granny papaya peelings. Papaya is widely known in the market. Papaya or curica papaya grows in tropical climates and is also known as papau or pau pau. Very sweet taste, vibrant color, and wide variety of health benefits are just a few reasons to add them to your diet. Papayas are excellent source of vitamin C and one single medium fruit provides 224% of your daily needs. Papaya peels flour is mostly non-perishable unless stored carelessly. It is contained in a 25 kilogram cloth sack and is securely locked with optin yarn. Each sack is then distributed for use of each bakery. So once you have created your product, 
Uh, besides creating your packaging, you must also create your product description. If you notice, if you buy something like a junk food, try to check its packaging. You'll see a product description um, at the back, usually. Now, once you're done with the product description and the packaging, you'll now go to the process. So clearly state how your product was created. So going back to the flower, um, they, the company would start cleansing the papaya peelings with a sodium chloride, the quality control before and after cleansing. Soak the papaya peelings in sodium metabisulfite, quality control before and after soaking, and then wash the papaya peelings, dry the papaya peelings, quality control before and after drying, grind and sieve the papaya peelings, quality control after grinding and sieving, pack and store, quality control after packing and storing. So that's how you process the flour. It's not all, you should not only show how your product is created, but you also um, show. So you must also detail the production flow. For example, the process in making papaya peel flour is a, is a combination of both human labor and machines. With the proper working process and utilization of both human and machines, the quality of papaya peel flour is guaranteed. The steps and explanation in each production process are as follows. Cleanse the papaya peelings with the sodium chloride. When all the peels have been gathered, the first step of the production takes place. Peels will be selected in the peels will be selected and the ones which pass the standards would be separated. Selected peels will be washed with water which has sodium chloride or better known as salt with a ratio of 2 is to 1. Quality control before and after cleansing. Production manager will check the ratio of the water and salt. After it is cleansed, he will check whether the peels have been thoroughly cleaned. Soak the papaya peelings in sodium metabisulfite. Papaya peels will be soaked in a container with a sodium metabisulfite for 1 hour and 30 minutes for longer preservation and lengthen the shelf life of the flower. 50 kilos of papaya peels shall be soaked in 0.013 kilograms of sodium metabisulfite solution. Quality control before and after soaking. Production manager will check that the amount of sodium metabisulfite, which is 0.13 kg, would be followed. In the event that discrepancies would happen, an approximate of positive negative 5 grams of such chemical wouldn't change the quality of the desired output. Wash the papaya peeling. After the papaya peels are soaked in sodium metabisulfite, it will be washed in salt, salted water to thoroughly remove the preservatives left in the peels. Dry the papaya peelings. After the peelings are washed, it will be sun-dried for approximately 12 hours. Quality control before and after drying. Production manager will check that the drying room is clean and that it is pest-free. Also, he shall inspect that the desired dryness of the peelings is achieved. Grind and sieve the papaya peelings. After the peels are completely dried, it will be placed in a grinding machine to become flour. After the grinding process, the peels will be sieved to achieve the desired texture. The sifter that should be used must have a measurement of 40 mesh squares per inch for finer texture. Quality control after grinding and sieving. The production manager should inspect and does a quality check to ensure that the desired fire, fineness and texture of the flour is achieved. The checking should be done manually and keenness on doing such is strictly done to avoid probable deficiency. Pack and store. The papaya peel flour is then packed in a sack and accurately weighed to ensure its quantity. A sack of papaya peel flour weighs 25 kilograms and is then stored in a, room, in a storage room not exceeding room temperature to ensure its quality and safety. Quality control after packing and storing. Production manager should see to it that the room condition is maintained constantly at 23 degrees Celsius and it should be well ventilated. Palates are used to pile up sacks and stacking heights should be maintained at 15 sacks. So once you're done with the production flow, then you can go to or you can proceed to creating the materials or equipment used. So provide a brief description on the material. For example, um, there's an, for example, you use an apron in the production of your product. Then of course you include apron and a small and a brief description. An apron is an outer protective garment that covers primarily the front of the body. It may be worn for hygienic reasons as well as in order to protect clothes 
from wear and tear. Now, let's go to the next part, which is the financial forecast and expected returns, risk, and contingencies. So actually, this part is just your projection on what's your estimated income for maybe after one year. And then as much as possible, if you can, provide your projected income statement for a total of five years. Maybe you can have a yearly income statement. Now, we also have here a balance sheet. This is also still a projected, like what are the things that you need? Um, that for example, for assets, you have cash, you must have accounts receivable, you might have inventory, so you might have land, building, and vehicles. So again, this is just a projection. And you have to make sure that whatever um, amount that you indicate here, is related to the to the contribution and actual amount that you have used in the conduct of the business but in our case um, it would be also possible that a teacher will give you a specific amount let us say um, your capital will not be more than 1 million so it depends on your teacher to continue the financial forecast, to compute for the payback period, that solved using this formula, total investment divided by annual net income after taxes. So still, this is a projection. If you will be able to implement or operate your micro business operation, then of course, you'll have to base your annual net income from your, let's say monthly income or daily income. You can actually project that. You just have to multiply it with the number of days or months. Payback period actually means that it would take, let, let's say in this example, the total investment is 1500000 and the net income after taxes is 500000 So dividing the total investment to the income, that's three years. So it means that it would take the company three years to recover the whole investment. And then another, we have the return on sales, which is computed using the formula net profit after taxes divided by sales. And we also have return on assets or return on investments, which is computed using net profit after taxes divided by total assets or investments. Now in the last part, we have here the environmental and regulatory compliance. So before you can operate a business, you must have these following permits and licenses and certificates, like for example, business permit, Registration of the business name, barangay clearance, police clearance, sanitary permit. Most especially, if your most especially if the nature of your business is about food, then it's very crucial to have a sanitary permit before you can operate your business. Fire and safety inspection certificate. Most especially if you have a building, then it must be checked. Community tax certificate, electrical permit water installation permit, certificate of occupancy, registration with the land and transportation office, most especially if you have a vehicle, application for social security system membership, application for Philippine health insurance membership, application to membership to Pag-ibig or HDMF. This is, actual, um, this is actually for the employees, for your future employees, application to Bureau of Internal Revenue, Registration with the Department of Labor and Employment. But basically, for the purpose of the simple business plan, maybe you can just have a business permit, um, barangay clearance. Because since you are still students, grade 12 students, then maybe you can just include um, whichever is necessary in the conduct of your future business and then just include a uh, small detail or short detail about that. Let us say, for example, electrical permit. So let's assume that you have a building and you have installed electricity in that building, then of course you must um, have an electrical permit. So just write a simple or short detail about that. How to get it, what is it all about, why is it needed? 
So this is just an example and I hope that this video has helped you to create um, a simple business plan.